that you can use to defend yourself in a street fight from multiple attackers, from a bigger opponent, anybody. The five best self-defense fighting techniques, your five best fighting self-defense techniques. You're gonna learn them right now, starting with number one, which is going to be a jab, cross, and a lateral move. And I'm gonna show you what each one of those look like and how to practice it. Because in these classes, I want you to learn how to defend yourself. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what you're starting from, you can defend yourself, it's your right to defend yourself. So the first of the five best fighting techniques for self-defense is going to be a jab, followed by a cross, that means a straight front hand, straight back hand, and then moving to the side to get out of the way. Most people stumble and trip on their feet when they move right or left, and that's because unless you're athletic and you play a sport, you're not moving side to side. So the first thing you're gonna do to practice this is extend the front hand, make a tight fist, turn that over. Turning over the hand forces you to get full extension in the punch. I want you to have knockout power, and to get knockout power, stopping power, you'll need three things. First is full extension. Number two is a rotation through the shoulders and the hip. And number three is moving your body into the punch right through their chin. So number one of the five best techniques, fighting techniques for self-defense is going to be jab with the front hand, cross with the back hand. See that full extension? That's very important. You're moving your body forward by stepping forward with the front foot, turning that back shoulder and moving your body into that punch, and then immediately pulling the hands back in this protected position because they're trying to hit you as much as you're trying to hit them for self-defense. Jab, cross, and you're gonna to move to the side. Which side you move to, it doesn't matter. Just move to the side, get out of the way. If you throw two punches and they throw back and they miss you all together, you have the advantage. So the first of the five best self-defense techniques or five best fighting techniques for self-defense is a simple jab followed by a cross and a lateral move. Now I'm gonna tilt the camera so you can see my feet because I want you to practice this footwork. From here, you're gonna see that my left foot is in front of the right. That's because I'm right-handed with this technique. If you're left-handed, simply switch your feet. From this position, practice moving to the side and moving back. When you go to the right, you're gonna push off of the left, and the right foot moves over, the left foot follows, and then you're gonna to move to the left, push with the back foot, get over quickly. Just practice moving side to side. Never crossing your feet or you're gonna to go to the ground. From here, move to the side and simply move back. Now, that's the first of the five best fighting techniques for self-defense. Simple jab, cross, and a lateral move. Make sure all your powers have stopping power, or all your punches have knockout power, stopping power, and you get that by extending and rotating through the body, and then moving your body forward just a little bit. You only have to go an inch and make contact with that jaw and knock him out. Now the second of the five best fighting te techniques for self-defense is gonna be a low leg roundhouse kick plus that jab cross that you just did. I wanna show you how this looks on this banana bag or moist is the lower leg. Now, things like joints, knees, or ankles, or wrists, elbows, you're always gonna aim for a joint in self-defense if it's true self-defense. If you're just an idiot walking around trying to fight people on the street, then I can't help you there. This is pure self-defense. This is, you didn't start it, but you have every right to defend yourself. So in this position, they're advancing here. Their focus is here. They might be throwing punches. You're in this good position here. You're gonna take this back leg and turn and hit them with the back leg or the shin on their lower leg. Or you can use your front leg. Just simply lift up and turn your body in with a real quick, powerful shin kick to that lower leg. You wanna take their leg out from under them it's very easy if they're not an experienced fighter, maybe they're just an experienced punk or an experienced bully or an experienced group of thugs walking around intimidating people. They didn't expect to run into you. You've been training how to defend yourself. You have every right to defend yourself and you're, you're using the second of the five best fighting techniques for self-defense, which is from this position, your hands are up and open, you're behind your guard, you just blast that lower leg, turning your whole body in and then after you hit them, following up with that jab cross. And again, moving your body forward in a crossing punch or jabbing punch 
all your punches. You should be moving forward, full extension, full rotation, hit that chin, knock them out, self-defense. That's the second of the five best techniques for self-defense. Now, number three, we wanna go into elbow strikes. And here's, we're gonna get into combos right here. Combinations, I love combinations. A one, two punch and a lateral move, that's a combination of three things. A front punch, a back punch, moving. The second technique, was that lower leg kick followed by a jab cross. And of course, you should always move. If you hit him and knock him out, you can stand there, wait till the cops come pick him up or get out of there. Maybe they've got buddies coming. You need to scram, right? Protect yourself, it's your right. Number three, elbow strikes. Now I'm gonna show you first, there are many ways you can do elbows. You can bring the elbow across here. You can bring the elbow up here, up under the chin or up into the solar plexus. You can bring the elbow down into the head. That's a very powerful, effective technique. That takes a little bit more training. You can strike this way with the back of the elbow, although I don't recommend it. It's very tender on most people. So I would focus here and I would focus here. That's how you're gonna defend yourself with number three of the five best fighting techniques for self-defense. This comes from Muay Thai. This comes from a lot of traditional martial arts. Your hands are here guarding your head. Your elbow comes in your thumb almost touches your chest or collapses onto your head or your chest right here and your elbow comes around and you're striking, you're aiming for targets. Self-defense is about principles more than techniques. Now I know we're talking about the five best fighting techniques for self-defense, but I gotta throw principles in. Principle number one is pay attention. What's happening around you? Number two, get in a better position, hands up and open. Number three, use your elbows. Um, Kachu says you did it today, use your elbow, excellent. So from this position, you're, in this, you're thinking about what targets can you remove or destroy? What can you remove or destroy? Their ability to see, breathe, temporarily, permanently, think clearly, be awake whatsoever, maybe you knock them out. Have their, their mouth able to jabber and yell at you because they can't, their jaw's broken. Maybe that's what you have to do to defend yourself. Hit that neck, they go unconscious, smash that uh, joint, smash that joint, break that arm for self-defense. So in this position, this first elbow is coming here. The second elbow is coming here. Here's how you practice. If you have a bag, use a bag. If you don't, just use the air. Strike in the air, that's a good way to start. You have to start, don't wait to start. So if I'm here, I'm gonna use this bag again. You know what, let's use this bag, come with me. This is one of my favorite ones to strike because with all the water in it and the rubber, it almost feels like hitting a person's body for self-defense. So from here, this hand is closest to his face. That, this is my left hand, my left foot is closest to the bag. That means whichever hand is closest, I'm gonna use that. And when you strike, don't just turn through. See how I missed it all together? If you just turn through, you'll miss it all together. You wanna turn and as you turn, push, going straight in. Now my body weighs a lot, I'm a big guy. So if I take this elbow and I blast him right in the face, in the jaw, in the mouth, in the throat, it's going to do a lot of damage. It's gonna have stopping power and I'm aiming for a target to remove or destroy. And that's not, I didn't make that up. That principle comes from Tim Larkin who wrote the book. I know somebody asked me, it's, it's Larkin, L-A-R-K-I-N, I believe. And the book is called When Violence is the Answer. This is about self-defense, it's not about street fight. Like I said, if you wanna be a bar fighter, a brawler, or you wanna know how to beat the bigger guy, and you wanna get in the, you're uh, making beef with somebody, that's your bad, you're gonna get hurt. That's a stupid way to live your life. Instead, you have every right, think about it this way. No matter what your age is, you're allowed to defend yourself. From here, you're gonna drive this in, drive this in. Oh, and self-defense, that's a God-given right. That's a human right. That you don't have to ask your government to defend your, uh, if you're allowed to do that, right? And I know this, this is because I saw it today. The headline read, Taiwan prepares for invasion by the communists. They actually said the country, but the I wanna make that separation. It's not the people, the people aren't bad. It's the communists in charge. They wanna invade Taiwan, right? They've been talking about it for years. But the, con the country's getting in a defensive posture. That's you, you're getting in a defensive posture. And you don't want to, you don't wanna have any piece of that. If you're Taiwan, you don't wanna fight against that giant communist machine. Right? But if you have to, you have to. So you get in a posture of self-defense. From there, you practice your skills. You hone your weapons. You make sure that when you strike, you can do some damage. It's a deterrent. It's the ability to stop somebody to push them back. You're in that better position. Your elbows come forward. 
Now I'm gonna give you the secret. Oh, wait a minute, let me show you real quick. Bringing this elbow up, straight up, under that jaw, right? Or into the solar plexus. You can drive that in and forward and see how that just puts that right there into a better position. That's why this is number three of the five best fighting techniques for self-defense, which are using your elbows. Keep the elbows simple though. I wanna show you one other way you can multiply your, your power, your force, and that is to close this hand. Bring this one over, right? You're gonna have this first. It's, and this works especially if they're a bigger person, they grab you by the wrists and you can't throw your elbows. And if we were here together, I'd show you. Got some people coming in later. If they're here in time, I'll have somebody come out and demonstrate, we'll do it together. They take hold of your, your hands right here, your wrists, and they start to manhandle you, grab your own hand, bam, bam. And you're gonna drive these elbows into their face. As soon as you hold your other hand, when you go like this, let's say you have 100 pounds of force. As soon as you go like this, you're gonna have three, four, 500 pounds of force coming forward at the speed of light, right through his jaw, or through his nose. That happened to me last week. Split my nostril open. I was demonstrating with somebody. He got a little too ambitious, which was good. Blood everywhere. And I, he said, I'm sorry, I said, don't apologize. Now they all see that it works, because I want you to see that it works. True story. And then you get the skin, the liquid skin. What do they call it, new skin? Man, that stuff's amazing. It's healing up so fast. I was worried. I thought I had to go get it sewn up. It was gonna go have two nostrils over there. But the liquid glue, man, that stuff's great. Just a tip, pro tip. You get your nose smashed in half, go get some liquid glue from the CVS. Your hands are here. You close them, blast them first, push them back and drive some elbows up and in. Then I want you to change levels. Changing levels is a fancy word in martial arts and self-defense for bend your knees. From here, bend your knees and then drive that elbow straight into his solar plexus. You're here, self-defense elbows to the face, and then if you want, you can drive that elbow right into his throat for self-defense, right through his face. They're very, very powerful. Now, the fourth, this is my, it's one of my favorites. It's, um, it's one of those things where every time I teach number, this, number four, the fourth, four of the five of the best fighting techniques for self-defense, People look at it and they think it's some kind of cartoonish thing that it's not real. I'm like, no, no, no. Go easy on your partner too, because if you do it too fast, you're gonna cause real damage. So if you practice with somebody on number four especially, go slow, because you can really pop their eardrums. Self-defense is all about what can you remove or destroy, right? Your ability to see, think, uh, breathe temporarily, permanently through the throat. You make your, your, your list in your head, get in that better position, you say back up. And while you're saying that, you're thinking, you take a breath, you calm your mind, you say, okay, he takes one cl step closer, I'm gonna jab, cross, and move. I'm gonna take out his eyesight. I'm gonna take out his ability to breathe through his nose, his teeth, down his throat. Maybe I'm gonna go straight in for his throat for self-defense. Or you breathe, you're in that better position, and you say, this guy's coming at me too fast, I'm gonna take out his leg. You go for that low leg kick, number two, jab, cross, and move. Or number three, your hands are up and open and you say, this guy, he's already in my space. His hands are on my neck. What can I do? Put your hands over his hands, pull down, bast him in the face, bam, 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 and then throw that straight into his eye for self-defense. All of those work, but you have to make that decision. You have to think, what am I gonna remove or destroy? And then you get vicious, you go all in. The fight's not over till you win in self-defense. Now, number four, go slow. You're gonna take your hands, just like this, and you're gonna box his ears. When you do this real hard and real fast, like I said, go slow, you, really, you can really hurt somebody. We've, I've done this before, and people have had temporary ear loss because they get a tear in their eardrum from the force of that air rushing in, the pressure that you're gonna create. You don't have to be very strong to be able to box somebody's ears and create real damage. Boxing their ears, if they lose that ear and it starts ringing, they lose their ability to, yeah, it's air pressure. Kachu says air pressure. That air pressure goes in, pops the eardrum. They'll have a hard, they'll get the vertigo real fast. They might go straight to the ground. They're gonna be in massive pain from this. They have their hands, you said, back up, don't touch me. Your hands are up and open, bam, pop in. Let's say these are the ears, just real quick and real fast. Now that's just an easy one. That's a simple one, but it's not as vicious and that it's dirty. It's not, it's just self-defense, it's gotta be a little dirty. It's vicious and nasty, number five, the five 
the number five, the five best fighting techniques for self-defense. And remember, these are never as important as principles. Principle number one, you have to pay attention to what's happening around you, situational awareness. Principle number two, you have to get into a better position. Hands up and open. Put them between you and the threat. Get some distance. From here, I'm a standing target. Bam! You can't block that punch coming to your face. I don't care Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, Wing Chun Master, it man himself. You can be that Tai Chi man propped up by the uh, Communist Party. It doesn't matter, right? Oh, I was thinking today, like, learning Tai Chi for self-defense is kind of like learning ballroom dancing for self-defense. It has a physical benefit. I'm sure there's some moves. You're going to get strong legs. You can throw some kicks. But if you want to learn self-defense, learn how to throw a couple punches. Learn how to sprawl, stop someone to take you to the ground. Learn how to hit with some elbows and knees. And you got to go a little bit slower than the willow tree or whatever it is. I don't know. It's been a long time since the end of the self -defense. Just because you asked me last time. Is Tai Chi good for self-defense? I'm just going to say it's like ballroom dancing. Is ballroom dancing good for self-defense? Um, it has some benefit. Would I go to a ballroom dance class if I thought that I needed to protect myself in the street because violent crime is rising? If I see that violent crime is rising all around me, I live in San Francisco. Let's say I live in San Francisco and I'm a target and the violent crime is rising and I want to learn the five best fighting techniques for self-defense. Am I going to go to a ballroom class? No, I'm not going to go to, to the park and do the Tai Chi either. I got to move a little bit faster. <laughs> they're just, they're just, they're coming full force. They're trying, they're taking hold of you. They're smashing you. They're hitting people with stuff. They're punching people out of nowhere and they're trying to knock them out. They're, they're going after people who they think are weak and feeble. These are the punks, the thugs. The worst, the, the dredge of society, the, the lowest rung, who are no cash bail and they're just putting them on the streets. Don't go to the ballroom dance class. Don't go to the Tai Chi class. Train yourself. Train at home. Throw a couple punches and move. Do the Tai Chi because it's good for your health. That's why I did the Tai Chi. All right, number five. This is good to see you too. No, we, we're, we're uh, uh, you asked if I was, hope none of my loved ones were in the building class in Miami. Thank God. No, we weren't. Hopefully they get all those guys out real soon. And um, Shannon says she's going to listen instead of watch. You're about to drive. Thank you. That's how I consume most of my YouTube stuff, too, by I'm driving. I always listen. I never watch. Um, I don't not, never watch, but I very rarely watch because I'm always busy, right? I love being able to drive and listen to the YouTube. But thanks, Shannon, for being here. And thanks for your question about um, all the people in my family, family, friends, we're safe. You know, I said a prayer this morning when I woke up and saw in Miami, what happened to that building just fell. Number five. All right, so this is the first um, uh, triangle whip says going to do the Joe thing. Awesome. Go practice Joe. Joe's my favorite weapon. I'm doing that later tonight. If I, once I get done, I have a, a hard, I've had a hardcore boxing classes all day. That's why I'm all fired up in the self-defense stuff. I've had people coming in from eight o'clock all the way through one o'clock and we just did self-defense, self-defense, self-defense. Uh, Brittany says, I'm funny. Thank you. I'm, I'm not trying to be funny, but I know I, <laughs> you're laughing with me, not at me, right? I get it. That's fine. But um, number five, take their eyes. This is about real self-defense. Take their ability to see you. That means you're going to take your hand, especially your thumb, you're going to stick it in that eye as hard and as fast as you can and just straight in, right? You're not messing around trying to choke their neck. You're not messing around reaching up, trying to uh, palm strike their nose into their brain, instant death, which is not really a thing. I want you to take your hands and go right for their face. Most of the time, they're not going to expect it. If they're put, they put their hands on you, you put your hands on them. Another thing you can do with that thumb is stick it right there. Now, that's bone. You hear that? That bone and muscle. Right there, that changes my voice. That's my throat, right? You stick that in there hard enough, they either will that, will, that will crush under eight to 10 pounds of pressure and they will asphyxiate and die right there in the throat. If they don't let you go and you start pressing, but they can't because they get the gag reflex and they have to go back. Once you get them off of you and you get their hands off you a little bit, then take the hand up, move it up into their eyeball and just press as hard as you can and just reach in there and grab and hold on tight as you move them back and you... You let them know under no circumstance where they're going to hurt you. You have the ability, the right, it's your human right to defend yourself. It's an eye gouge. So number five, five of the five best fighting techniques for self-defense. Number five, we're going for the eyes. It's as simple as that. Every animal, sharks, bears, 
uh, dogs, right? Vicious dogs. And then, not the pets, not the little ones, you know, the vicious ones who've been abused and they're out on the street and they maul people. And sharks, I think I said sharks, alligators, that's what I was thinking of. And the crocodile, crocodile, the two sisters were swimming last week and the crocodile came up, <laughs> snatched onto one of them, got ready to do the death roll into the bottom of the, 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 the river or whatever. And this girl flies over to her twin sister, flies over the top, superwoman punch, right in his face, hit him right in the nose, bam, 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 nose and eyes. Go for the nose, go for the eyes. It's that principle of using violence, principles, not techniques. This is the whole point. I know I said techniques, and these are the five best fighting techniques for self-defense, but we gotta shift. Once you learn techniques, practice principles. Principle number one, situational awareness. Pay attention, where's the threat? If you've got a phone, stick it in your pocket. Don't walk around like this, especially at night, especially in a new area. If you were in Miami Beach last night, not anything about the building collapse, but you're walking, I see it all the time. I see it around here. I see these young people, old people, people my age and older. Everybody seems to be doing it. They're sucked into that thing. And there's zero situational awareness. Somebody can come straight up, bam, smack them in the head, take that thing out of their hand or do worse. And that happens. So you have to pay attention. I hit myself kind of hard here. <laughs> um, that's good. You have to see it works, right? But go for the eyes. Number five, five best Fighting self, uh, techniques for self-defense, five. Like I said, I've been teaching this stuff all day, so I'm a little hyped up from, and it's just adrenaline. I, I love teaching this stuff because I like to see that light come on in the eyes of the young person, the older person I work with, uh, people in their 60s, 70s, 80s. I work with teen girls. I had a teen girl and the mom. I've got four teen girls coming in in just a little bit. And uh, the, the dad, and he's like, I, these, I gotta get these girls at right? this age. You know, he's, they, we've gotta teach them self-defense. It's gotta be practical, it's gotta work. And I said, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about principles. Pay attention. Stick the phone in your pocket. Stop staring at it. If, and, they, and they always say this thing. Well, I have to see what mom said when she texts me. I have to respond or I'll be in trouble. Which yeah, I know is not true. They're just saying that to say, you know, because they see it and they ignore mom, right? For maybe. Unless, maybe they don't. I don't know. But you know how young people are. You know how, I, you, know how you were when you were young. I know how I was when I was young. We, I didn't have a we didn't have text. We didn't even have... We never have phones, right? They were still stuck on a wall. But you know what I'm saying. Call your friends, tell them not here. So you get that text that you have to respond to, or you're using your map app. That's the other one people say. Well, what happens if I have to walk somewhere? I'm using the map app. Well, then you stop and you put your back up against the wall and you look around and make sure no one's getting ready to come up and smash you with a chunk of concrete. And you pick your phone up and you put it in front of your face. And see that? Now your neck's not going to get a crink in it. And from here, your peripheral vision now works. You can see anybody coming here. You can see anybody coming over here. You do whatever you have to do. Send, put it back in your pocket. Go on your merry way. Pay attention. Keep yourself safe. Don't wait for someone else to come save you all the time. It might not happen or it might not happen fast enough. It'll happen, but it happens four minutes later. It doesn't take that long for something really horrific to happen to somebody, to happen to you. So be your own first responder. Learn how to be your own bodyguard. Learn how to be the, the, the leader of your own executive security detail when you take your family out. You're, you're on high alert. Your head's on a swivel. Every couple steps, you're looking behind you. Every couple steps, you're looking over there. And you're not paranoid. You're just prepared. This is all about prepare or panic. So learn how to do the five best fighting techniques for self-defense. But more importantly, practice those basic principles. Every time you walk out the house, look around. Look at what's close, look at what's across the street, take some mental notes, pay attention. Keep the phone where it's supposed to be. The phone's for when you stop moving. Certainly not while you're driving. See too much of that, right? There's no situation awareness there. But then the second one is you have to learn how to protect yourself in this protected position. Here I'm a big guy, I'm nice and square. All my vital spots, you wanna hit me and hurt me, stop me, use violence, get, go for my nose, go for my eyes, go for my throat. Take my teeth out, right? Take away my vision, my ability, box my ears. So I'm gonna get myself in a better position. I'm gonna step back, making myself a smaller target. Put my hands between me and you. And when I do that, they're up, up and they're open. This is the universal sign for stop. This also allows you to flinch into a protected position. Now I didn't make that up either. That comes from Tony Blower. Tony Blower, write those two names down, Tim Larkin, L-A-R-K-I-N, and Blauer, B-L-A-U-E-R, Blauer, Tony Blauer. These guys have been doing the self-defense forever. I've seen them 
I've read everything that I can get from those guys. I've watched all the videos I can get. I've gone to the seminars of like the Tony Blowers back in the day when he first got started. So it's simple, common sense, basic stuff. It's excellent, excellent work. Yeah, get, you said you bought two. Get a book and give one to somebody else. When Violence is the Answer by Tim Larkin and Tony Blower is called, you guys know? I don't remember. It's, uh, what's he call that stuff? But this is called the flinch block. That's all you really have to know for now. Then go look them up and figure, spear, S-P-E-A-R, spear system. But you're here, right? Your hands are up and you're in a protected position. Someone throws a punch, you naturally flinch behind it. If they go to take you down, you naturally go down. In this position, you can sprawl, you can keep them back. You can drive those elbows, drive those elbows, throw some knees into their head, throw some punches. Santa, welcome. It's good to see you. But your hands are here in this position. From that position, that's number two of uh, self-defense, basic self-defense principles. They're not the five best fighting techniques for self-defense. We're gonna go over those one more time. But the, five, the best principles, that means strategy, your overarching things, the most important thing, more important than an elbow or knee is pay attention. Number two, better position. Make your body a smaller target, step back or step in. I like to step in and close the distance. I learned that when I was a military policeman in the Marine Corps. That worked very well for me because I'm a big guy. And if I close that distance, you have a hard time punching me and hitting me, especially when my hands are like this. That interrupts your line of sight. You can't see me. You got to move around me. It's similar to Krav Maga, but it's a thousand times better. That's just, that's the arrogant Marine talking. Don't pay attention to that. It's just because Krav Maga comes from the Israeli Defense Force, the IDF kind of stuff, and, and it's, all, it's, a, it's a national pride thing, right? I'm allowed to be proud of being a Marine. We were doing Krav Maga before they came up with Krav Maga, but it's basically, basically, it's similar. It's a lot of the same principles. The Krav Maga guys, they've evolved and they're getting better. I used to have a different opinion. My opinion has improved quite a bit as I see what they're doing now because they're starting to do, they're adopting Tim Larkin stuff and they're adopting Tony Blowers. So it is becoming a lot of the same thing. They're evolving, it is getting a lot better. Yeah, Krav Maga, that's a great option. All right, number three. Number one, pay attention. Number two, better position. Number three, ask yourself the question, breathe. Breathing always helps calm down, things down. Let's say, yeah, Semper Fi. Semper Fidelis, dog. Let's say you were a race car driver in the Indianapolis 500, right? And you're coming fast down straight away and you get up to 190 miles an hour and you gotta take that turn. If you go 100 miles an hour, you're gonna crash into the wall. But if you slow down too much, all the other cars, boom, 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 they're gonna pass you by, you lose, and then they fire you. Yeah, they hire a, a driver who has more gumption, right? So you have to learn how to turn your head first. That's just a pro tip. Not that I'm a race car driver, but I learned that. You have to turn your head because wherever you look, that's where you go. But then you have to learn how to calm down. You can't slow down too fast. Your heart's going to be racing like this. If you slow down too much, you're going to uh, lose the race. If you don't slow down enough, you're going to crash. So it's got it. You have to learn how to breathe, breathe and calm your mind and then slow down just enough. Boom, edge, as they say. That's the same thing in self-defense. You're in this better position. Number three, you have to breathe so you can calm down. You don't have any time to slow down. It's not about slowing down now. You're going all in, full speed. Fight's not over till you win. So from here, breathe. Ask yourself, what are the targets I'm going to remove or destroy? His ability to see me, his ability to breathe uh, temporarily, permanently, his ability to, to hear. I put that pressure in there. That's one of the techniques we're talking about. Pop here. Boom, all of a sudden he can't hear, his ears are ringing, he can't stand, he lost his balance too. And then he falls to the ground and you run out of there, let the cops scoop him up. Those are basic, basic techniques. Um, his throat, I'm gonna use those elbows. I'm going straight into it with my hands here, then I'm gonna smash right into his, his temple. I'm gonna try to turn off his operating system. Lights out, I'm going into the neck. Boom, I hit that vagal process, blood flushes out of the brain, boom, falls like a sack of potatoes for self-defense. You're protected, you're safe, it's your human right. Government doesn't give you the right for self-defense. You have the human right for self-defense. It's God given right, or whatever you believe, right? I believe in God, That's, I believe it comes from, it's my human right to defend myself. Freedom of speech, I think that's a human right too. All right, well, our hands are here, although they can still shut you down. 
They can kick you off the of YouTube if you say the wrong thing. I'm trying not to do that. Try not to do that. Hands are up and open. I'm in a better position. And then I ask myself, what can I remove or destroy? So this is where the techniques come in. This is where the five best fighting techniques for self-defense come in. In principle number three, which is what will I remove or destroy? And I'm going to go into number one, jab, cross, and a lateral move. Jab, cross, lateral move. Never cross your feet over. Punch, punch. Move. Remember how do you get the maximum power for knockout? You have full extension, turning, and moving your body. You throw the punch like that, you hit the chin, you're knocking them out, right? Punch, I don't care how old you are, how young you are, how big you are, how slow you are. If you turn and you turn, you full, and the whole reason of turning that hand over is you get that full extension, line up everything behind those two big knuckles, boom, boom, right on his chin, get out of the way. That's the first of the five best fighting techniques for self-defense. Number two fits right into the third principle of self-defense, which is what targets will you remove or destroy? It's a low leg roundhouse kick. Go for that shin. Use your shin. We did that on the banana bag. I'm using the back leg. Blast them. You can, if you're fast, you can use the front leg. Blast them. You're going to hit them. Hopefully, their knee is going to go. Wah, and you're either going to snap the tendons or break that joint. Make it hard for them to stand up. Take away their ability to chase you, to stand up. After you blast them there, boom, bam, bam. Throw those two hard punches, boom, and move out of the way. Add one and two together. Number three, elbow strikes. Hands are here. Remember I said bring this in close. Elbow strikes don't just come this way. This way, they can come down on top if you want. You can fly in straight in like this if you want, but focus on basics. Bring this around. If you bring this hand in to touch your body, you're gonna have maximum turning. You're gonna have more maximum power. If you also have your palm facing the deck, facing the ground, that's a Marine Corps term, smash this way, this hard bone is exposed to the front, it's going right through them. Aim for their throat. If you turn it this way, that's all, that's all uh, muscle and tendon. You don't wanna do that, that's gonna hurt. That's not gonna hurt them as much either. Still does some good damage. But you wanna do this. Uh, Brittany says, won't that take out your leg bone? Usually, Brittany, because your body's in motion and you're turning and you're hitting with your shin bone, which is very hard. Most people don't realize how hard their legs are. And because of the way that they're standing, it's going to push them like this. It's going to hurt them a lot more than it hurts you. And it might. So you want to practice it, right? If you have a gym, you practice or lightly kick a pole, wrap it with some old... Uh, uh, some foam or get some, uh, we, we used to use old carpet. You go to a, a place where they're ripping up old carpet. <laughs> that stuff used to stink, man. But you rip up all that carpet and you just wrap the poles with it. And then you hit with all your sticks. And then you do all your elbows and your knees on the poles wrapped in that carpet. And then we used to kick those things. And um, so you can get stronger. But for, so for self-defense, that's a choice. But remember, it's a question. What can I remove or destroy? If that might not be the answer for you, so don't do that. But if it is, blast them, two punches, lateral move. Number three, the elbow strikes to make your elbow so much stronger. If you just elbow here, you have power. Oh, there's one more thing you have to see about this elbow. Let's go back to the face bag. I call this the head hunter because I got the people in here ducking and weaving, bobbing and weaving, getting under it. And then, bam, lifting them up with that uppercut. I love this bag. But this third one, when you throw an elbow, almost everybody who hasn't practiced a lot, they'll sweep right by it. You have to know how to elbow turning, but also going forward. So when you turn and move your elbow in, and you can use any part of this, really, you put this bone right on his throat and you just drive and you're going to move him back, right? For self-defense. That's your goal. Get him off of you. If you want to hit even harder, grab your other hand, close this hand, this little meaty portion there, you just take it like that. Looks like a little spider. Smash it, right? Squeeze really hard. Now, when you elbow, it's exponentially stronger. Your hands are like this, you're like, back off, creeper. And he grabs you by the wrist, Brittany, take your hand here and blast him. He's not gonna be able to stop you from doing that because of the leverage you're gonna create. So from here, you're blasting, boom, boom. Try to break that jaw maybe into his arms, into his ribs if he's taller. And then finally, straight in, using that tip in through the face, 
or bend your knees and go into. Shannon says she used the, X, uh, or used the elbow to break X's nose. Yes, they're the most powerful parts of your body for self-defense in my opinion. They're extremely powerful if you learn how to use them. And this is good. You know what the movie was? I have a, I have a client who's been coming with me. She comes in with her son and she's been coming for months now. And every session, almost every session, she likes to refer to the movie that sparked her interest. She has a real need for self-defense. But she watched that movie with J-Lo. You guys remember J-Lo? Well, now she's in the news for the, the break. I don't know why they report news like that. Who cares? Um, what was that movie called? Remember, she's not going to take it anymore. She's mad. This guy's abused her. It's a movie. It's a movie, right? But, man, she gets him in the end. Oh, yeah, Ong, Ong Bak. She's, we're talking about two different movies. J-Lo is not an Ong Bak. But that's a good movie about knees. Enough. Thank you, Brittany. Yeah, Brittany knows all about it, right? Shannon knows about it. Shannon's ex-boyfriend or ex-whatever knows about uh, enough with the broken nose and the elbows. And it's just, it's a mentality. It's I will defend myself. You don't have to like me, but I'm going to defend myself. You don't have to like me. You don't have to like my, the color of my skin, how I talk, what I believe in, my religion, my political beliefs. But you have no right to put your hands on me. You have no right to hurt me. You have no right to steal my dignity, to take away my freedom, my life, something, my family's life and I will defend myself. And that's what you're saying. Then you grab your hands because they're holding you. Bam, bam. And you blast them. And then you level change, which remember means bend your knees, right into the solar plexus. It's extremely powerful. We practice it over and over and over again. Keep it simple. Self-defense works. When it's simple, when it's powerful, immediate, direct, and explosive. Immediate, direct, and explosive. That's as immediate, direct, and explosive as you can get. All right. Number four. Remember, situational awareness, that's a principle, self-defense. Number two, principle of self-defense is getting a better position. Make your body a smaller target. Step back or step in, turn your shoulders, put your hands between you and him. Put the hands between his fist and your face. He's not gonna punch your hands, right? He might grab them, grab yours, bam, and try this. If you have a partner, try it, but go slow. That's how I got my nose split last week. It wasn't this one, it was the elbow coming after it, but they're very effective. Um, and no, uh, number three, <laughs> Hey, uh, Steve, good to see you. Number three, or number four, uh, three, the third, the third principle is ask yourself with a breath because you have to calm everything down, right? Yeah. Haymakers. Let me, let me address haymakers. Cause the question, I don't know if that's a question or comment. The biggest question is what, how, what, how do you defend against the big haymaker? Cause everybody thinks you're going to be fighting Jethro at the bar or something. And they're, he's going to be throwing big haymakers, knocking people out. And that's a real thing. People do that. If you're in that flinch block and you're that protection and that you catch that coming out of the corner of your eye, this is why you're here. You're naturally going to go like this and it might hit you, but it's going to hit your arms and it's not going to contact. And then after it hits your arms, bam, bam, lateral move. That was number one or go for the elbows. But if your hands are up and open, you're going to be able to defend against almost all punches, straight punches aren't going to happen. They're going to have to come to the side or they're going to try to grab you and you're naturally going to flinch into the right position. That's why it's called a flinch block. We have that flinching mechanism for a reason. From here, after you flinch a couple times, don't just keep standing there because they'll figure it out. That's when you boom, boom, you go back and you start to fight for self-defense. Fight's not over till you win. That's principle four, by the way. Principle three, what targets can you remove or destroy? Their ability to see, breathe, hear, stand up straight, be awake, uh, breathe permanently, temporarily. Move any of their joints. You're going to smash those joints. Box the ears. Number four technique of the five best fighting techniques for self-defense. Just coming straight in, creating all that massive pressure. Pop in their ears. Um, I've had it done to me a little bit too hard a few times. I haven't lost hearing, but I lost hearing for, uh, temporarily. I, I, I think I've done some things where I've, <laughs> you know, da, 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 da. And you, you lose some hearing over time, especially you Marines, right? Marines, Army, military, you know you lose hearing from all of the training and stuff, right? But um, boxing the ears, you put that pressure in there, you're going to pop the eardrums. You pop the eardrums, the ears are ringing, they can't hear, it's very disorienting. And then they lose that inner ear sometimes or often. They, they get vertigo, they drop like a sack of potatoes. They can't stand up straight. They certainly can't pursue you in the fight. 
for self-defense, fight's over, you win. And you just, and it's, it's as simple as your hands are in this position, reach forward, and just as hard as you can, pop both sides, just your hands smashing on the ears. Very effective, number four of the best, five best fighting techniques for self-defense. And number five of the five best fighting techniques for self-defense is, um, Steve likes to say, I target high than low. Yeah, changing it up. Oh, and we're gonna go over this in another one, but if you can learn how to move your body a little bit, you're not gonna get hit as much, right? Learn how to move your body. But if you're looking for just basic self-defense, start like this. If you wanna get into more advanced self-defense, learn how to bob and weave, learn how to stick and move, learn how to um, work the jab, learn all the, the basics of, of real fighting. Number five, take their eyes. The fifth of the five best fighting techniques for self-defense is remove their eyesight, literally. And like I said, if their hands are on you or if they're starting to choke you, stick your hand first. It's all about this thumb, right? Or you can do a knuckle. I think the thumb is best, easiest for most people. But when you do it, most people go like this and, they, and it, nothing happens because they're pushing with their hand. You gotta turn your thumb forward and you stick that right in their throat, create that gag reflex. That's enough to move them back or go straight up into that eye and just dig in there as hard as you can. It doesn't take much. I've seen it. It's called a fish eye. Pop. The eye pops out. It's hanging on his cheek. Literally, it's hanging on their cheek. That's enough to stop most people in a self-defense situation. Triangle Whip says, as soon as I throw punches, I follow through and let it flow. Perpetual combinations, love it. But you go straight in, right into that eye, and you don't have to try to pop it out. It's kind of gruesome. You can fish hook them too. But go right in, and you just, you just push, 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 push. And the more you push forward, the more they have to go back. They can't do a thousand push-ups on their Popeye. David said, Popeye. <laughs> yeah, right, David. They can't, you can't, they can't make that strong. There's nothing, there's nothing that they can do. That's the whole beauty of self-defense. Real practical self-defense is you're going for soft targets. You're going for targets you can remove or destroy. And every animal is the same. You stick your horse, a big, heavy, you know, several thousand pound horse, cow, um, bull, whatever. You stick it in his eye, he's got to move back because of the pressure on the eye. It's instinctive. It's just a normal thing. So your hand goes in, but you have to be committed. You have to be committed to using violence to stop violence. Violence to stop violence. Violence against violence. They're trying to perpetuate or perpetrate violence against you. You're going to use violence to stop them. That's, yeah, and uh, David says no rules when you want to survive. Yeah, the only rule is fight's not over till you win, right? Don't give up. Don't quit. Almost everybody quits too soon in everything in life. We all need to toughen up a little bit. We all need to do a few more reps, a few more uh, rounds, practice a little stronger, a little harder, a little faster, keep going, keep going. And then when you're tired, keep going. And when your hurts a little bit, get up and keep going. And then when you think this is getting ridiculous, my body's gonna really hurt tomorrow, I'm gonna tear something, keep going. Because almost everybody has so much more left in the tank than they think they do. Do that in training. And then in fighting, there's no question. You don't quit. You don't quit till it's over. You don't quit till you go home safe. Or, or you're in the uh, hospital recovering, but they're expired because you won the fight ultimately for self-defense. And yeah, and uh, Sana says easier said than done. No kidding, no kidding it's easier said than done. That's the whole point. That's the whole point of toughen up. When I'm telling you, I'm telling me too, when you need to toughen up, that's the whole point. I know it's easier said than done. I know that this stuff isn't easy. But neither is someone, when someone comes and tries to take your life or your dignity, and I'm, and I'm talking to women mostly about the dignity part, and you know what I'm talking about, and they're going to use this violence against you to alter your life forever, either permanently or alter it forever. It's not going to be easy. It's not, it, it, and when it's easy, when it's not supposed to be easy, don't do it easy. Don't, don't even imagine. And then feel sorry for yourself for 30 seconds and get over it. And it's, oh man, this stinks. Throw yourself a little pity party. Eat a little bit of that pity party cake. Tastes like poop because nobody wants to eat it. And you walk around with your poop face and your little, uh, you know, poopy pants. And then get back in the ring and fight again and fight again. And the more you train yourself to do that, then it's just like the J-Lo movie. Just like the J-Lo. And I know it's a movie, but it's based on something real. Yeah. Kachi says, let the lion loose. I like a better, this is a um, Confucian theory. 
a Confucian, uh, I don't know the actual saying, but this idea that the cheetah, the mama cheetah, right? She's so soft and loving and she licks the little babies and keeps them clean. You know, cats lick their, their young and she feeds them and, and she's gentle with it. But someone comes around and messes with their babies, that cheetah comes out and she'll fight to the death. You have to have that mother cheetah instinct that comes out, fights to the death. And a lot of us have it, but the problem is if we don't prepare, we can't use it. Just like that first one, two punches and a lateral move. I, I do this training and I'm training with guys who are military, super experienced, a lot of combat experience guys, and they can't throw punches with any power. It blows my mind. And it's because they don't know how to extend and they don't know how to turn and they don't know how to move their body. And then they barely can move to the side. They throw these big, lumbering, slow, weak punches, and then they, they're tripping over their feet with a simple one, two step. That's just because they haven't practiced it. You have to practice it. The more you practice, the more you can do. It's capacity. The more you do, the more you can do. The more you do, the more you can do. And again, and son, I'm not picking on you. I'm just saying, it's not supposed to be easy. Stop asking for everything to be easy. Let it hurt. It's like when you were a little kid or you're around little kids. And, and you put the food on their plate, and it's got the green stuff, and they say, Dad, I don't like broccoli. And I say, I didn't ask you if you like broccoli. I put it on your plate because your body needs it. Eat it. But Dad, I don't like the way it tastes. <laughs> you don't have to like it to eat it. Half the things I eat, I don't like, but I eat it, right? I eat the, the nutrition, the, the vitamins, the mineral, the energy, especially as you get older. you got to feed your body right. So stop asking for everything to be easy and stop saying what you're not going to do. That's the biggest message for today, right? Out of the five best fighting techniques for self-defense, I'll give you number six. And that is stop saying what you will not do. Yeah, Papa ate spinach. Eat your spinach. But eat anything. Do everything. Say, start saying yes to life instead of walking around afraid of everything and saying, no, I'm not going to do that. Who put that in your head? That came from someone else anyway. You, you've lived 62 years that way. Isn't that long enough? <laughs> or 38 years or 24 years? How long you've lived with saying no to everything and what you're not going to do and you're not going to eat and you're not going to do? Stop, right? Start saying yes to everything. Lay it out. Get some ethics. Get some morals. Write down your, your basic, your standards for life. I will live my life like this. I will tell the truth. I will strive to be kind to others. I will increase my uh, tolerance for other things instead of getting angry all the time. I'm going to smile more. I don't care what it is, right? And work on how you live your life. You write that stuff down. That's real self-defense. That's self-defense against living a miserable, poor little life. I saw the woman last night. I took her the blessing bag. The little daughter, she made these little blessing bags with her friend. They put all the stuff in there, the water, and uh, some place, things to clean up, and uh, some bubble gum, you know, because your breath is out there. It's nasty. She's living on the street. And just a whole bunch of little things. And I put a couple bucks in there. Because the woman, she's got the mental illness. And I've seen her for two years, up and down, up and down. Now she's sleeping outside of my building, two doors down. And I was complaining about it at first. And then I heard myself and I thought, stop complaining, stop whining, do something about it. Who am I? I get to go home and sleep in a bed at night. This woman's sleeping on the ground. And I'm complaining that she's hurting my business because people are going to see a homeless woman. What a jerk. Anyway, after I got, I gave myself a 30-second pity party. And then I took a bed... Uh, a blessing bag outside, and I gave, uh, she was asleep. So I just put it in her stuff so she'd get it in the morning. But that's the whole point. You have to take some action. Stop looking around the world, waiting for things to change. Engage with the world and make the world the way you want it to be. And that first thing you have to do is stop saying what you're not gonna do. I forgot my whole point there. But you guys have been awesome. Hopefully we'll see you in a little bit. I got a class coming in. They're lining up at the door. And then later, it's either today, tomorrow night, or tonight, or later, Tomorrow, we're going to work with a weapon. I think we have um, the Joe, and then I'm trying to do a lot of stuff with the Hanbo, that shorter walking stick. How to defend yourself with a walking stick? We're going to do that. Never. I would never run for president. The, the, the president have no power, right? Someone controls. I don't care who they are. Uh, I wouldn't want that job. You couldn't. You couldn't force me to do that job. That job would be miserable. I'd rather be the, the a good dad, right? and in my community and walk around with my little blessing bags and say, hey, do this and do that. And, and you run for president. Be the president of your own life. Write down how you're gonna live your life. If you wanna be more honest, be more honest. 
immediately. Not who, remember when you were a little kid and they said, what do you want to be when you grow up, Johnny? And you say, oh, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a firefighter. I want to be a police officer. That's a job. Who cares what the job is? Instead, write down, next time you have a kid and you ask him, what do you want to be when you grow up? Say, no, no, no. How do you want to be when you grow up? You want to be more loving, more kind, more honest, more hardworking, more disciplined, more focused, more brave, more um, trustworthy, more on all those things. And you say, you can work on that now, right this second. And if you do all those things, when you get older, you're going to have a, an amazing life because people are going to want to be around you. You're going to accomplish so many things. But if you just focus on your job, you want to be an astronaut, you know how that goes. That changes like 15, 16, 20 times. For most people, some people become an astronaut. But for the rest of us, a job's just a job. How do you want to be? And this is for anybody, even if you're 80 years old, how do you want to be tomorrow? Do you want to be more kind, more honest, more tolerant, more patient, more flexible? Work on that tomorrow. Work on that now. And then every day, you, it just accumulates and it adds up. And then when you start taking it, write it down. You gotta write it down. And you start taking action and creating the life that you want to be or have, you have a sense of purpose. And when you have a sense of purpose, you have uh, a, a little bit of contentment. You have, your joy starts to rise, right? No one can take the joy away from you because you know who you are and, and what you're, you're all about. But you have to take some action. You have to do that. And I think we live in a society where we consume so much junk that everybody else puts out that we never take minutes. Write it down. Get out a piece of paper. Write down your standards. How do you want to live your life? How? Not what, not who. Not uh, how much you own or how much money you make or the car you drive. Give me a break. This down here, this place, there's, I, I saw six Rolls Royces today, right? And yeah, they're cool. I'd love to have a Rolls Royce. I wouldn't want the payment. <laughs> we want the insurance. And they're fun to look at. But the, you know how fast that stuff fades. It fades like that. All right, next class is tomorrow, Brittany. We'll see you then. Or if it's not tomorrow, it'll be tonight in an hour after this next class that I teach. But most likely, I, I, I'll probably burn myself out because I'm really, I go hardcore into this next class. So we'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, put your cell phones down. Thanks, David. We'll see you guys tomorrow. You've been awesome. Thank you.